Imagine standing at the edge of everything you know, a night so deep, so infinite, that the stars themselves seem like whispers of a story too vast to tell. Now imagine that every one of those stars belongs to a galaxy, and there are not thousands, not millions, but two trillion such galaxies in our observable universe. Two trillion islands of light, each holding hundreds of billions of suns. Two trillion laboratories of gravity, gas, dust, and time. Two trillion possibilities for everything we call existence. When we look up, we are not seeing the universe as it is, but as it was. Every speck of light carries a message from the past. Some from a few years ago, some from billions. The night sky is not a canvas, but a time machine, where every dot of light is an echo of cosmic history. And as our telescopes sharpen their gaze, from Hubble's first deep fields to the James Webb Space Telescope's infrared revelations, we are beginning to realize that the cosmos is both more crowded and more mysterious than we ever dared to dream. We thought we understood how galaxies were born. We thought we knew how they evolved. Now the universe is rewriting the script. The story begins 13.8 billion years ago in darkness. The Big Bang had already happened, a blinding surge of energy, expanding faster than light, cooling into simplicity, hydrogen, helium, a trace of lithium, that was all. There were no galaxies, no stars, not even light, only a vast ocean of invisible matter and radiation. For hundreds of millions of years, the cosmos was a fog, glowing faintly from the afterglow of creation, the cosmic microwave background, still visible today as the oldest light we can detect. Then gravity began its slow, patient work. Tiny fluctuations in density, ripples left by quantum tremors in the newborn universe, drew gas together. Hydrogen gathered, pockets thickened, temperatures rose, and at last, the first stars were born. They were monsters, hundreds of times the mass of our sun, burning hot and short, flooding space with ultraviolet light. That light tore apart the cosmic fog, allowing the universe to become transparent. As these first stars died in cataclysmic explosions, they seeded the void with heavier elements, carbon, oxygen, iron, the raw ingredients of everything to come. From their ashes rose the first galaxies, chaotic swirls of stars and gas, bound by invisible dark matter halos. They were small, fragile and fiery, merging constantly, colliding and reshaping into larger structures. And it is here, in this ancient light, that the James Webb Space Telescope has begun to surprise us. When the James Webb Space Telescope opened its golden eyes in 2022, it did more than take pictures. It opened a window into a time we had never seen before. Built to see in infrared, Webb can peer through dust and across distance, seeing light that has stretched and reddened over billions of years. What Hubble saw as darkness, Webb now fills with galaxies, entire structures that existed just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. But what it found shouldn't exist. Some of these early galaxies are too massive, too bright, too organized for their age. According to our models, it should have taken billions of years for galaxies to grow that large. Yet Webb is showing us behemoths forming almost immediately after the dawn of time. The universe, it seems, builds faster, hungrier and stranger than we ever imagined. These observations challenge not just our models of galaxy formation, but our understanding of cosmic evolution itself. It's as if we've opened a history book and found entire chapters written before the supposed beginning. Galaxies blazing in the dark, already mature, already enormous, when the universe was still an infant. And so we ask how? How can matter, light and gravity sculpt order from chaos so quickly? What forces were at work in that cosmic nursery? And if galaxies are forming this fast, what else might the universe be doing that we have yet to see? Every galaxy is a story, a self-gravitating memoir written in stars. Some are spirals, delicate pinwheels of light spinning serenely through the dark. Others are ellipticals, vast, featureless orbs of old stars, glowing like embers. And some are irregular, chaotic clouds where collisions have shattered order into new possibility. At their heart lies something invisible, a supermassive black hole. 
Almost every galaxy from the dwarfs to the giants anchors itself around one. In the Milky Way, that monster is Sagittarius A, four million times the mass of the Sun. In others, like the galaxy M87, black holes weigh billions of suns, devouring gas and light, shaping the fates of stars tens of thousands of light years away. Galaxies are not static, they are ecosystems of motion. Stars are born from cold molecular clouds, shining for billions of years before dying and returning their matter to the interstellar medium. Supernovae enrich the gas, gravity sculpts it again into new stars. The cycle continues, a slow, grand breathing of the cosmos. The Milky Way, our home, is an average-sized spiral, a hundred thousand light-years wide, containing about 200 billion stars, but average, in cosmic terms, is deceptive. The nearest large neighbor, Andromeda, is barreling toward us at 400,000 kilometers per hour. In about four billion years, the two galaxies will collide, merging into a single larger structure, perhaps an elliptical galaxy called Milkameda. In this universe, nothing is still. Even the most serene spiral is a dance of chaos, creation, and destruction. Collisions sound violent, and they are, but not in the way we might imagine. When galaxies crash, stars rarely hit each other directly. The space between them is so vast that the odds of impact are almost nil. Instead, their gravity collides, reshaping entire systems, stretching them into tidal tails of starlight and igniting waves of star formation. These cosmic encounters are both catastrophic and creative. When the Milky Way and Andromeda meet, their black holes will spiral inward, releasing gravitational waves that ripple through space-time. Gas clouds will compress, birthing new generations of stars in brilliant blue clusters. Across the universe, Webb and Hubble have captured galaxies mid-collision, luminous webs of dust and gas glowing with newborn suns, the antennae galaxies, the cartwheel galaxy, the tadpole galaxy. Each is a snapshot of transformation, frozen in the act of rebirth. Over cosmic time, this is how galaxies grow. Not by quiet accumulation, but by merging. Small galaxies fall into larger ones, feeding them with fresh stars and dark matter. Even now, our Milky Way is consuming its smaller neighbors, the Sagittarius Dwarf, the Magellanic Clouds. Every light we see in the sky is a survivor of this endless, graceful violence. Galaxies are not just islands of beauty, they are crucibles of chaos. Star formation is not gentle, it is explosive. Within dense clouds of gas, gravity pulls atoms together until fusion ignites. The radiation pressure from these newborn stars blasts the surrounding gas outward, sometimes halting further starbirth. Supernovae tear through neighborhoods, carving vast cavities in the interstellar medium. The balance between creation and destruction determines a galaxy's shape, color, and fate. A young galaxy glows blue with hot, massive stars that live fast and die violently. An old galaxy fades to red, filled with long-lived suns burning quietly. In the hearts of some galaxies, supermassive black holes feed on surrounding gas, releasing jets of energy that stretch thousands of light years, powerful enough to heat or even expel gas from the galaxy itself. These active galactic nuclei regulate growth, acting as cosmic thermostats. The James Webb Space Telescope has revealed that this dance of violence began earlier than we thought. Even in the first billion years, galaxies were already birthing and killing stars at astonishing rates. The universe, it seems, wastes nothing and spares nothing. Each galaxy is a battlefield between gravity and radiation, collapse and explosion, order and entropy. And yet, from this turmoil emerges beauty, spirals, clusters, nebulae, light sculpted by physics into something that looks to us like art. All things, even galaxies, have lifespans. They are born in clouds of hydrogen, grow through mergers, flare with starlight, and eventually they fade. The first sign of a galaxy's death is silence. The cold gas that once formed stars begins to run out or is expelled by violent feedback from supernovae or black holes. Without new stars, the galaxy reddens. Its remaining suns grow old and dim. Elliptical galaxies, the ancient survivors of many collisions, 
are like cosmic retirement homes, vast but quiet, filled with billions of aging stars burning the last of their fuel. Their once rich spiral arms have long since dissolved into featureless halos of light. The mechanisms of galactic death are still being uncovered. Some galaxies are quenched when their supermassive black holes emit such intense radiation that they blow away the gas needed for star formation. Others are stripped of material as they move through dense galaxy clusters, their gas stolen by the intracluster medium, a process called RAM pressure stripping. In the most extreme cases, galaxies die together. Collisions that once triggered starbursts eventually consume their fuel, leaving behind a single quiescent remnant. Death in the universe is rarely absolute. Even as galaxies fade, their stars drift outward, merging with the faint glow that fills intergalactic space, a kind of cosmic afterlife. The light that escapes will travel for billions of years more, carrying the memory of their existence across the deep. If galaxies are the bright punctuation marks of the universe, what lies between them is the unseen grammar that holds everything together. The universe, we now know, is not a random scattering of galaxies. It is structured, woven into a vast cosmic web of filaments and voids stretching across billions of light years. At the intersections of these filaments, galaxy clusters form, titanic congregations containing thousands of galaxies bound together by gravity. Between them are immense voids, regions of almost total emptiness where few galaxies dwell. What sculpts this architecture is something invisible yet dominant, dark matter. It makes up roughly 85% of all the matter in the universe, yet we cannot see it, touch it, or detect it directly. Its presence is inferred through gravity, the way galaxies move, the way light bends, the way structures form. Without dark matter, galaxies could not exist. Ordinary matter and the atoms that make up stars, planets and us is simply too scarce. It is dark matter that provides the scaffolding, the cosmic skeleton on which light gathers. But even dark matter is not the end of the mystery. The universe's expansion is accelerating, driven by an even stranger force, dark energy. An invisible pressure that pushes galaxies apart faster and faster, defying gravity itself. Together, these unseen ingredients, dark matter and dark energy, make up about 95% of the cosmos. Everything we know, everything we've ever seen, all the stars and galaxies and light, make up less than 5%. We are, it seems, studying the universe through a keyhole trying to describe a cathedral. When the James Webb Space Telescope began transmitting data, astronomers expected refinements. Instead, they found revolution. In its first deep fields, Webb captured galaxies from a time when the universe was less than 500 million years old, and they were massive, far more developed than any model predicted. Some contained stars as heavy and metal-rich as those in much older galaxies. It was as if the cosmic timeline had been compressed. Galaxies were forming, evolving and maturing at breakneck speed. Some of Webb's most controversial findings hint at objects that might not even fit our definitions. Dark galaxies, massive clouds of gas glowing faintly with starlight, or dark stars, hypothetical objects powered not by fusion, but by the annihilation of dark matter in their cores. Each new image Webb sends back feels like a challenge, a cosmic riddle scrawled in infrared. Are our theories wrong? Is the universe older or more complex than we think? Or are we only now seeing the full diversity of how galaxies can be built? For every question Webb answers, it asks 10 more. It reminds us that the universe is not obligated to make sense in human terms, it only has to exist, and exist it does, in forms stranger and more beautiful than imagination alone could ever conjure. Nothing in the universe lasts forever. Galaxies, like stars, like everything, are temporary arrangements of matter in motion. As the cosmos continues to expand, galaxies move farther apart. The space between clusters stretches faster than gravity can pull them together. Over trillions of years, the night sky will empty. Distant galaxies will fade beyond visibility, their light stretched into wavelengths too long for any eye or instrument to catch. 
Inside those remaining islands, the process slows, star formation ceases, the brightest suns die and collapse into white dwarfs, neutron stars or black holes. The faint embers of long-lived red dwarfs will glow for quadrillions of years before winking out. The Milky Way Andromeda merger, billions of years from now, will mark our own galaxy's final act of creation. Beyond that, silence. Black holes may evaporate through Hawking radiation, releasing their last energy as the universe slides toward equilibrium. A cold, dark state, sometimes called the heat death. Yet even that end is a kind of symmetry. The same laws that allow galaxies to ignite also demand that they fade. Entropy is not destruction, it is fulfillment. The universe disperses its energy the way a flower releases its seeds. To think of galaxies dying is to think of life itself, not as tragedy but as transformation. Galaxies are clocks. Their light marks time's passage across billions of years. When we observe a distant galaxy, we are not seeing it as it is, but as it was, sometimes before our own solar system existed. A galaxy 10 billion light years away shows us the universe when it was young. A quasar 13 billion light years away carries messages from near the beginning. To look out is to look back. Every photon that reaches our eyes has traveled through expanding space, dodging dust, bending around gravity wells, and aging along the way. That faint glow you see through a telescope tonight may have left its source before the first continents formed on Earth. In that sense, astronomy is an act of archaeology on the grandest scale. We do not dig through soil, we dig through time. And as we map the two trillion galaxies of the observable cosmos, we are really charting the visible memory of everything that has ever burned, collided, or dreamed of light. The James Webb Telescope, orbiting a million miles from Earth, is our latest witness. It collects whispers from the ancient sky, translating them into data, then into images that reshape what now means. The deeper we look, the longer now becomes. Two trillion galaxies, each with hundreds of billions of stars, each star potentially with planets of its own. The scale is staggering, but scale is not the point. The point is that we can comprehend it at all. Across 13.8 billion years of cosmic evolution, atoms forged in the hearts of supernovae assembled into creatures capable of curiosity. Through fragile biology, the universe has grown eyes to see itself. When we watch the images from Webb, infant galaxies shimmering red with ancient light, we are witnessing our origins, written in the language of physics and time. We are small, yes, but not irrelevant. Our thoughts are arrangements of the same hydrogen and helium that first collapsed into stars. Our art, our science, our wonder, these are galaxies of the mind, swirling with their own luminous patterns. The universe may be immense beyond imagination, but understanding gives us a kind of belonging. To know that we live in a cosmos of two trillion galaxies is to realize that we are not outside it. We are part of its unfolding. When the last light finally fades, long after every galaxy has dispersed, perhaps some trace of that awareness, a pattern, a memory, a photon carrying data across the dark, will remain. Because that too is what the universe does. It remembers itself in every spark of consciousness that dares to look up. And so we keep looking, through glass and mirror, through equations and dreams, across two trillion galaxies, through beauty, violence and silence, to see not only where we are but what we are, light briefly aware of itself, shining in the dark.